Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We acknowledge that today is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. As we open today's session, let's humble ourselves and dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Precious Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise and the worship. Yes, Lord. There is no one like you. Yes, Lord. You are the sovereign Lord. Yes, Lord. Life comes from you. Yes, Lord. Help comes from you. Resurrection comes from you. You are the God of all grace and comfort. Even today, King of glory, we open up ourselves that you might cause us to see what you want us to see, that you may help us understand your purpose, that we might run the race you have set ahead of us and fulfill it, that you might receive the glory, the honor, the power, and all the praise. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' is mighty name. Amen. Amen. So our dear viewers, today we are continuing on this great agenda of unmasking who our adversary is. And we will take our text today from the book of Revelation chapter 12 from verse 7 to verse 17. And we will read and the Bible says and war broke out in heaven Michael and his angels fought with a dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer so the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the world he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them what the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that he may fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the presence of the serpent so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman 
that he may cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth, and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Who kept the commandments of God. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What do we see here? We see conflict happening in various spheres in, from verse 1 to verse 6 that we had looked at previously. This conflict was happening on earth. Then from verse 7 we see now the conflict move from the earth. That is from verse 7 to verse 12. The conflict now moves to the heavenly realm. And from verse 13 to verse 17 the conflict comes back to us and there is one denominator in each of these conflicts this is the devil the adversary he is the common denominator in all these conflicts and the bible shows us the opponents he meets at every stage. The first one that we saw and we know well is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he overcame the devil three times. The first time was in the wilderness. The Bible tells us after his baptism that he was taken by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And for 40 days he was tempted. And the Bible says that having done all the devil left him for a season. That's what he tells us in Luke chapter 4. In other words, he threw everything he had at him. And yet he did not prevail. Jesus overcame. But that was not the end. Throughout the ministry of Jesus Christ. We see him overcoming the devil. Through the lives of many that were afflicted. That were demon possessed. That had sicknesses and diseases. Whenever he met them. He cast the devil out. He cast the evil spirits out. And brought deliverance and healing to these men and women. And in several accounts. Even when he met the dead. Like when he meets Lazarus. Who had been dead four days. Buried in a tomb. The Bible says he stood outside the tomb. And authoritatively said Lazarus come forth. And the man who had been dead for days, by that time he was rotting. I don't know what happened to the maggots. By that time there is no blood circulating in his in his body. At that time, there is no organ that is functioning. But one order from the Lord. Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And he who was dead came back alive. He showed victory over the devil. 
through his ministry. Then thirdly we see him overcoming the devil at the cross of Calvary and his death and resurrection were a demonstration that all dominion and power of the enemy have been overcome. No wonder he stands in Matthew 28 before his disciples and he says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He is speaking like an overcomer. Now when we leave that victory we move on to the next phase of victory over the same adversary. And this is what the Bible unveils to us in verse 7. It says, and war broke out in the heaven. And Michael and his angels. Now this is the next opponent that comes up. And we see Michael and his angels fight against the dragon and his angels. And the Bible says, but they did not prevail. Even then he was overcome. Has been defeated on the earth. Now he is defeated even in the heavenly battle. And as a result of that, the Bible says there was found a place no longer for him in heaven. And so he was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Now we need to understand who is Michael? Who is Michael? Now this opponent Michael the first time we encounter his name is in Daniel chapter 10 again concerning war in the heavenly. When there was a messenger sent to deliver a message to Daniel and this messenger was hindered by the prince of Persia until Michael came to his rescue. And in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, we see the name Michael come again. And this time he's described to Daniel as his prince. In essence saying he is the prince of Israel and Daniel. Now, the Jehovah's Witness have used this text to say that Michael is Jesus. But no, Prince in this aspect means he holds a certain sense of authority and power. And where do we confirm that? We confirm that in Jude 9 where we have another instance of Michael. And this time he's contending with the devil concerning the body of Moses. And he says, The Lord rebuke you. Now, if it was Jesus himself, he would have said, I rebuke you. But the angel Michael <laughs> is speaking on behalf of the Lord who is Jesus. And he's saying the Lord rebuke you. Now we need to understand that the name Michael has, is broken down into three Mikael. Now me is simply, simply says who. Ka is 
is like ka chitegeza afana el is where we get elohim elo mukija elo elohim so you add it together it say who is like god wali gata wa mu ani alinga katonda basically no one tali yu so the angel michael katono malaika mikai jude he is described as an archangel muyuda ba munyonyola nga makairo malaika omukuru which means he is a commander chitegeza mudumi he holds a position of authority i need to fetch obuyinza strength and power amanyi and we see him showing up era tumulaba nga alabika every now and then that the nation of israel comes to the picture so even here we see him come again because it is at this time that the nation of israel is gaining its place of preeminence and we understand that michael and his angels overcame nebawangula satan and his angels satan nebamalaika bagwo so that is 20 ejo bili 0 now let's go to 30 tugende ku 30 but before we go there nenga tunaba kutuka yu. the bible goes on to unveil to us bible yegendo okutuletele ekidala who our adversary really is omulabe wa feyani and several names are given era ina amanya manji in this text we see Four names come to the front. The first one is the great dragon. Now, the great dragon is simply describing his vicious nature. And his cruel character. In order to carry out his activities. Last week I told you that many of us have a distorted picture of who the devil actually is because many for many people we've been led to believe that the devil is some creature with horns whose color is either black or red and has a, a a fork a garden fork in his hand gakutene fork ennene je bali misa munnimi and he has horns on his head na mayembe ku mutwe that's not his description ne sikwe ku sicho sicheju that's not how the bible describes him e usenge li bible je munnyonyola that may be how the imagination of men describe him e binzo kubanga abantu mukusinzira ba mukolooza kwabo but that works to his favor na yecho chimuyamba because he can hide in plain sight awa somulo kwikwe kamu bantu The Bible tells us Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14 that he can disguise himself he can masquerade as an angel of light so don't take that picture for granted I want you to understand who he actually is and here also the bible to calls him that serpent of all now why serpent of all because he wants to bring to focus the work that he does and point us to the very beginning of humanity in the book of genesis chapter 3 where we see him show up for the very first time and point us out to the fact that he was that person behind what the serpent was executing so he, he was responsible for a serpent man's rule on earth era yoyo eya koleto bukujukuju okutwalo obuyinzo omuntu bwe ayina kunsi he was responsible for the temptation and the deceit that led to man's fall ye yalimba abantu baliyoke bagwe no wonder jesus goes back to tell us chikwewo cha yesu adayo na tutegeza in john chapter 8 and verse 44 yokana munana anamunya when he calls the devil when he calls the serpent of all the father of all 
Because from the very beginning, that has been the activity he has been involved in. Here again, the Bible tells us that the great dragon that was cast out is number one, the serpent of old, and he also called the devil. Now, the devil in Greek is the word diabolos. Now, which means slander. Or somebody who defames. Now, this also points to his activity. He's the one person who calls to question the character and goodwill of God. And not only that, he also accuses brethren. He slanders brethren. You, you see, many times, in the body of Christ, when we see brothers and sisters in the Lord slandering one another, for many, we direct our sight on the physical. And we forget to see the power that is working behind. That it is actually not this brother or this sister. But this brother or this sister has become a willing participant. Behind the scenes, the slander is at work. Executing and doing what he wants to do best. He is the devil. And the Bible says not only the devil. Number four, the Bible calls him Satan. Satan is the Greek word Satanas. Which is Hebrew for Satan. And it means adversary. Now, an adversary, it's, it's like if you are going for war, your opponent is the one who would call an adversary. So, the devil, in the same way, is an opponent. All is in opposition to everything that God does. He's in opposition to righteousness. He's in opposition to holiness. He's in opposition to everything that is good. So when you are trying to walk in righteousness and holiness, his activity is to oppose what you are doing. And and Peter warns us and tells us to be sober and vigilant. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, because he says, because your adversary, the devil. So he's saying, <laughs> That person that is annoying you is not your is not your adversary. That that work might you cannot stand at work is not your adversary. That, that neighbor of yours you are calling fire on every night is not your adversary. Your adversary is the devil. And the scriptures point into us. And he tells us he's walking around like a roaring lion looking out for whom you may devour. Now, in First Peter chapter 5, there is a Greek word that is employed for adversary. It is antidikos. In other words, somebody who comes, it creates a scenario of a lawsuit. And you have 
somebody on the side, a plaintiff, and then you have a defendant. So it is like an opponent in a lawsuit. So the devil is going around trying to paint the picture that God is unfair. God is not loving. God is unjust. If God were in charge, why are we facing the challenges we are facing now? He is responsible for all the problems we are faced with. Which we all know is far from the truth. But why does he do that? Because that is the way he acts. That is the way he works. He is an anti dicos Praise be to God. Number four. Sorry, number five. Which is outside what we have just seen in this text. When you look at other texts, we begin to pick the names of the devil that clearly points to his character and nature. And I want us to look at them with this one purpose unmasking or unveiling who our adversary really is. In Isaiah chapter 14, and verse 12, we get the picture of who he was before he fell. And there we meet the name Lucifer, which means the shining one, or the morning star. In the same way, every time we are tempted, to focus on self and exalt self instead of focusing on God and exalting and praising Him. We are taking the same path like He took that led to His downfall. So it is him that is saying, no, 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 you are better than you yourself actually God, you are better than Almighty. So, so why worship? Why pray? Why exalt self? 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 Why pray? You are the means to the end. And the moment you fall for that, you have taken the very same path of Lucifer. Now the next name that we see come up is in 1 John chapter 5 and, and verse 19 where the word talks about him as the evil one. Now the word evil one or the word evil is a Greek word poneros. It points to an evil that is malignant. So it points to an evil that remains there. The way a cancer comes and stays. And yet it is injurious and brings destruction in the end. So when we refer to the devil as the evil one, whatever his strategy is, its end is destruction. In John chapter 12 and verse 31, Jesus reveals to us the devil. Our adversary as the ruler of the world. Now this does not mean he's, he orders everything as in, and is in charge of everything that happens. No. God is sovereign. But in spite of God's sovereignty, the devil or the um, Adversary is the unseen head 
who is behind the en energy and the activity that arranges the world's affairs so that they stand in opposition to the divine arrangements of God who bring about an opposing view to God's viewpoint who are set out to confront God's word and God's agenda for humanity. And we see this coming through through various streams. Streams of humanism that tries to exalt humans above everything else. Streams of materialism where it tells you if you have the possessions of everything then you have life. Jesus puts it this way. He says what will it profit a man? Having gained this whole world and yet loses his soul. So materialism is not the answer to you need. Materialism is not the answer to your destiny. Jesus is the answer to your destiny. No wonder he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things will be added to you. The point is, materialism cannot be your focus. The other is spiritualism. It is trying to seek things that are mysterious that are outside what God is saying. That is the way the ruler of this world is leading many people. We, have, we are seeing so many people forbidding the eating of certain foods. I, I, I see so many in the corporate world taking up yoga classes. As a Oh, it is bringing tranquility. It brings the soul and spirit together. That is the plan of the devil. That is the plan of the ruler of this world. And don't fall for it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, your adversary is unveiled as the God of this age. This points to his rule and his activity in the dispensation of the church. And what does he do? He's the one blinding men and women of all walks of life leading them to apostasy living, taking them to believe that what they are doing however evil of diabolical it is it is being done in the name of God I was appalled the other day when somebody sent me a clip of people that were executing other people in Afghanistan and why they are shooting at them they are screaming Allahu Akbar and what are they trying to say they're trying to say God be praised but you're committing violence you're killing people and what is happening? The enemy has blinded their eyes and has led them astray. And you see, that's how deception begins. It picks up, and before you know it, you're gone. Many of us are 
surprised about the generation of our morals. But the fact is, it is pointing to one thing, the God of this age is leading many astray. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2, he's described as the prince of the power of the air. Basically, the Bible is trying to unveil to us this truth. That he is the head of the demonic host. So, whatever is against the viewpoint of God. He is the one that is responsible. He's is responsible for bringing doubts to us. And temptation to us of what God intended for our lives. But I want you to see something here. The Bible calls him the, the prince of the power. Of the air. Not the powers, the power singular. So basically, he's pointing to one corporate body. Within the immediate atmosphere. Basically, trying to say he's closer than you think. His forces are closer than you think. And he's responsible for the power and influence. And the evil activity that we see on earth today. Number 10. In again in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. The Bible calls him that spirit that is now working. Remember we saw him in Revelation. The Bible says he who deceives the whole world it, it is present continuous. He has done it, he's still doing it and will continue to do it. And here in Ephesians 2 and 2 we see him as that spirit that is now Working, that unclean spirit, that fallen angel, Malaike Yagua, who now apes, who now mimics what the Holy Spirit is doing on one side. And he does the contrary on the other side. So where the Holy Spirit is leading people to walk in holiness, he goes on to the other side of evil and finds every nice word that can fit evil and fits it to humanity. That's where you see homosexuals being called gay. That's why you see adultery beings and fornication being called living in. See, you see, we have a lot of things that are just out of out of sight in in terms of what God means for humanity. They're not in line with God's vision for you and me. What does that mean? It means the devil is now working. Now the word working is the Greek word energy which means to energize. When they say he is now working, that he is now energizing. He is now the one activating. He is now the one flaming. He is now the one continually 
pushing for this agenda to go forward. The next word we see for devil is the name Belaya. From 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 15. And the Greek word there, Belaya, means worthless. In other words, it's going to a hopeless ruin. So whatever he's doing, all the idolatry that is introducing has only one destination. Futility. There is nothing. Then, then we see the other word Bezebub. Jesus describe, we see that description of the devil. In Mark chapter 3, verse 22, and Matthew chapter 12 from verse 24. We see three words. Belzebub. Bezebal. Belzebul and Belzebul. Ne Belzebul. Now, Belzebul, Belzebul, simply means Lord of the Dung. Which speaks to his uncleanness. Belzebub, Belzebub, means Lord of the Flies. And where do the flies gather? Filthness. Belzebul, Belzebul means Lord of the dwelling. What does that mean? He's is the head of all demons that possess. Look at that. Then in Revelation 9, the Bible calls him Abaddon and Apollyon. Now, Abaddon is Greek. Apollyon is Hebrew. Meaning the same thing. Destroyer. Now, he is the source of all destruction. He is the source of all ruin. You see, many people say, better the devil you know. Do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> you, you are trying to get in company with somebody who is going to lead you to destruction. So how does he achieve that? He achieves that verse 9 to verse 12 tells us he achieves this by deception. He deceives the whole world. His agenda is lying. He is the father of all liars. And how does he lie? He lies against the truth of who God is. Of what God's plan for your life is. Of what Jesus' agenda and purpose is for on the earth. He lies against the truth of God's word. Second, he denies the truth of God's word. Thirdly, he counterfeits or imitates the truth. Fourthly, he distorts or perverts the truth. And that manifests itself in so many ways. We see it coming through in occultism. I, I talked about yoga, which leads people to occultism. He is the author of religion. So what he does, he gets what God has ordained and removes the heart from there. And then he gives you something. Having a form of godliness, it looks spiritual. It looks godly. But God is not in it. And what you have? Religion. 
He uses sin as his avenue. To bring people deeper into sin and rebellion. And the deeper they go, they further, the further they miss the mark of their high calling in Christ Jesus. The further are they from the purposes of God. I'll never forget many times, some time back, when I was growing up, there is this movie I was watching, and at the end of it all, there was this inscription, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. I'm like, what is this? You see, many of us, and I told you last week, think that the hell is the devil's palace. It is not. Hell is the destiny, the eternal destiny. It is a place of torment. It is a place of torture. Destined for the devil. And his angels. And all of them that will have heeded to him. And you shouldn't be desiring to go there. <laughs> there is no reigning in hell. <laughs> it, it is torment. It is ruin, it is destruction. For all eternity. Don't heed to the accusation of the enemy. Don't even heed to his sweet words. Don't allow materialism to draw you there. Don't allow anything to take you to that place. Having unveiled who the opponent or the adversary is, we saw his first opponent. The Lord Jesus Christ. And who overcame? The Lord Jesus Christ. We see the second opening. The angel Michael and his the angel Michael and his angels. And who overcame? The angel Michael. With his angels. And then the Bible tells us that, Bible, yeah, yeah, that it is only those, not only those that overcame. Verse 11 tells us there are others who overcame him. And that points to you and I. And it says that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And that's wonderful. And he says, and they did not their love their lives so much as to shrink from death. In other words, they had three weapons at their disposal. Which are the three weapons you have right now? Number one is the blood of the Lamb. Jesus did not, Jesus' death or Jesus' victory over the devil was your victory and my victory over the devil. Jesus did not need to die except to die in your place and my place. Jesus did not need to have victory over the devil. It is you and I <laughs> that needed victory over the devil. And by his death, you and I become victors over the adversary. And the Bible says we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Not by our strength. Not by our power. Not by our knowledge. Not by our background. But by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. The Lamb that John pointed to. And said, the Lamb of God. Who takes away the sins of the world. 
It is through his blood that you and I become victorious over all plans and machinations of the devil. And having overcome him, we have a testimony. We have a word of victory to encourage anyone that is being oppressed that victory is yours today. So I am speaking to you today. It doesn't matter how long you've been oppressed. The Bible talks about how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing all good and healing all of them who were oppressed of the devil. And concerning this Jesus, the Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He reigns. He is still the overcomer. No wonder the scriptures tell us that he who is within, in me, within you is greater than he that is out in the world. You are more than a conqueror. You have overcome him because of the blood of the Lamb. And at the end of it all, you will have a testimony of being an overcomer that somebody will listen to and be encouraged. You don't have to fear. Jesus has overcome. Yes, you are on a, an overcomer. Because he overcame. Therefore, let me speak to somebody. You are here and have never committed your life to Jesus. You are a pawn in this game. But you can become a victor. Tonight. And this is what you have to do. Surrender to Jesus Christ. Make him the Lord and the Savior of your life. Everything will change. No matter how long you have been in this form of deceit and powerlessness, victory is certain. Why don't you pray with us and commit your life to him and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I need you in my life as a Savior, Lord Jesus. I believe that you died for my sins. Wash me by your blood. Empower me by your spirit to live victoriously for you. Place a word of testimony concerning my life that I may not speak about anything else or anybody else but about what you have done for me today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Today, this moment, if you say this prayer from the bottom of your heart, you have been wonderfully saved. Now, I am going to join with you in prayer. You that is feeling powerless. You that does not see a way out of your current predicament. You that is in a mess that you can't plow yourself out of. Jesus. Yes is the answer. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that wherever your word goes, you follow it. it. We have spoken concerning the unmasking of the adversary, the evil one. And reveal to your people how in Christ Jesus we become victorious. Therefore, in the name of, above every name, the name Jesus, we come against every forces of wickedness, against every powers from hell, against every spirit of oppression. We command them to lose their hold to 
loose the hold. We command the healing. In every aspect of life, a healing physically, a healing spiritually, a healing financially. We command a breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Be set free right now. I speak to somebody hearing us right now. I speak to that one watching us right now. Jesus heals you. Now, yes, akunya kakano. Hallelujah, kariyanto si kariboshi akaraba. Be set free in Jesus' name. Okay, wamuli nyeri ya Yesu. Kariyanto zire kuzeri katazi kaya. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Okay, wamuli nyeri ya Yesu. Manro si kariyoshi akaraba. Be glorified, King of Glory. O gurunzwe kabaka wechiti. I give you praise. I give you honor. Wete no ne no kusi. In Jesus' name. Muli nyeri ya Yesu. Amen. Now, for you who was watching. You that has been set free. There is that number on your screen. Please call. Tell us what God is doing. And let's give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. So till we meet again next time. From Dominion Church International. We say shalom. God rich and bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.